All right, guys, Hank Cherry here. Um, going over my complete jerk bait setup. Um, basically, start out with this 15 pound, 100% fluorocarbon. A lot of guys don't go that big jerk baiting. I do. I'll go down to 12, but pretty much 15 all the time. Um, with a jerk bait, I typically fill the reel as much as I possibly can. There's a lot of techniques where I don't like if I'm on a skipping rod, I leave out line. Uh, when I'm doing this technique, I want as much line on there as possible. This is the STX Revo 7 3 to 1. Now, that's important to me because I tend to give the bait a lot of twitches with the rod and I can take up that extra line pretty fast. I know guys like a 6 to 1, a 6 6 to 1, or even slower than that sometimes. But what I've found is uh, fish bite on the slack line, I can get that line up so much faster with a 7 3 to 1. And this reel is absolutely unbelievable. It always gets the job done. And I very rarely have I ever had one fail me. I think this one is three years and three years in a row now running. So it's holding up, did fine, it did its job at the classic. The rod is the 610 medium light. Um, Veracity, the thing about this rod, it's labeled medium light, but it's got a lot more backbone down here than you think it does. And the tip is just about perfect with the flex on and everything, the way it bends. It's just about perfect for what I want. Maybe another four inches back would be absolutely perfect. But um, for the techniques and the way I fish, this is no doubt the rod, the reel, and the line setup. And with this line, I can throw anything from, you know, the smaller jerk baits to the eight inch jerk baits. And I got one rod, one reel, one line to do the whole job. All right, here we go. My jerk bait 101. Time of the year, October to about April 1st, where I live. Now, throughout the past few years, I've come to realize that I can utilize a jerk bait throughout the year in about every scenario. As long as the fish are feeding on shad uh, 15 foot or less, then I've got opportunity to catch some on a jerk bait. Type of weather I prefer, the colder the better with a breeze. Uh, I'm not sure why that is. I think the fish suspend a lot more in cold weather and they feed on bait and the wind is your friend and I stay on it all the time. When the wind's out and it's cold, I'm throwing a jerk bait somewhere as long as the water's clear now. Uh, my rule of thumb for fishing and water clarity with a jerk bait is this, no matter what time of year it is, if I deploy my trolling motor and I can see the bottom of the foot of the trolling motor, that means the prop and everything, then it's clear enough for me to catch one on it. There have been times where I couldn't see it and still managed to catch some, but there were probably other techniques I could have used to have had a better uh, turnout, but I'm a little hard-headed and that happens sometimes. Um, let's see, types of structure I like. When it's really cold, uh, I like sand flats, sand hold heat. They get ignored by other people because they look stupid. But anytime there's a flat, it's never barren. There's something there, whether it's a scattered rock, stumps, uh, some bait fish crawl up in there. But that is a great place when it's really, really cold to catch some really big fish on a jerk bait. Um, lay downs, the ones that the ones that extend straight out. I don't want the ones that come off the bank and go straight down. I want the ones that extend out because those fish will suspend under those branches. Um, and I like to catch them out in front of them. Docks are a great place to catch them. Bridges. Number one, I love a bridge. Anywhere I go, I'm going to fish a bridge. Bridge, have rocks, have current, hold fish 365 days a year. So I'm definitely always going to check out some bridges. Uh, boat ramps, uh, secondary points, channel swing banks, which can be effective. And uh, probably my favorite is the dead center of small cuts off the main lake. Uh, they get overlooked. They get fish a lot with jerk bait. I mean, uh, swim baits, but they don't see too many jerk baits. Um, but the way I like to fish mine with changing the hooks, getting some sink to it, I can get it down to effective depths where I can really catch some fish. And that time of year, I catch a lot of fish straight down the middle of guts of pockets. So there's a tip for you. That's something you definitely want to try no matter where you live. It's worked across the country. Uh, I like fishing jerk bait and grass, especially finding those grass edges. Real hard to find grass edge is an excellent pay place to uh, catch them jerking. I mean, that's about as fine a place as you can find. Um, you're really just looking for ambush spots for fish. Another good place is roadbeds. 
road beds, especially that have a rise. I'm not necessarily fishing the tip of the rise, but the back sides of it tend to be the highest producers for me. Um, color wise, I typically start out opaque with some kind of white. As the colder it gets, I go to more translucent baits. As it switches back over, I kind of go back to opaque, but then I add in some red and some bright chartreuse and some orange and some green. And, um, you know, I don't know why that is. Fish react to those colors so well in early spring. And then you see that red orange bite kind of fade away as the water warms. Uh, everybody has their theory on it. Everything is a little different. I think Swindle said it best. He thinks that they've been down the water so cold for so long as they move shallower that that bright color just pops out at them and um, they seem to really react at it if you ever notice when you catch a fish on a red crankbait or something in the spring usually when the bite's on they have it choked well if they're biting the, the red rattling base and they're biting the red crankbait why not throw a red jerk bait i've caught thousands of fish on a red jerk bait um, there's some places they tend to like it better than others what i've come to find out is when you find a place where they kind of favor that red the fish you catch on it tend to be bigger. So um, that's basically it. Now, cadence. Cadence is something I'm not going to tell anyone. That's something you have to learn on yourself, and you have to be comfortable with it and have to experiment because the wind may be blowing, the wind might not be blowing. It might be sunny. It might be cloudy. Um, you know, you're not going to know until you just try and experiment. But when you catch one, um, you need to kind of pay attention to what you just did and try to duplicate that and repeat it across because the the cadence may start out super fast in the morning and might slow down as the day goes on and as the afternoon swings it might pick back up now everybody talks about well you find these places well how do you find these places well i turn on my garmin units and my side scan and i look at them uh, the first thing i'll do before i go to a lake is i've already looked at the map and looked at the contours and seen what i'm looking for on the map you know as far as where those flats are going to be where the points jet out, how many bridges are actually on the lake. Um, you know, then you might want to go on Google Earth and look look at the map and see how much is rock. Look at old pictures, hopefully when the water was down, if you can find them, see if there's any scattered stuff on those flats. If there's grass, where's the biggest parts of the grass? Where was the hard line? Um, which banks is that river, river channel actually run up against? You know, all that it's just pre-work you do before we're going to get out there and go after it. And then you use your electronics to see what's going on. But I think one of the key things that really works for me when it comes to jerkbait fishing is using your eyes and your ears. Pay attention to where there's herring on the bank. Pay attention when it's cold to where the seagulls are flying around. Pay attention to where those birds are diving at each shad. Pay attention if you see some dead shad floating on top of the water or you're looking and you're seeing them fall around. You gotta pay attention for this a slight swirl. You know, that could be the mega school of fish that's right under that bait, just waiting to happen. You know, that happened to me and my son and my dad when we were at Chickamauga, pre-practicing before everything got um, screwed up with this virus. And it was two lonely birds and a couple of swirls. And I power pulled down and it was like 55 bass and 28 pounds later, that we had watched boat after boat after boat go by that we sat there and just destroyed them and if you hadn't have been just paying attention and seen that and luckily i've got garmin to have a live scope and look out there and i could see how many bass were so tight to the bottom and it's 49 degrees and it's seven foot deep and it's fish as far as you can see so it's things like that nothing is going to ever replace experience on the water um you know, the best thing I can tell a guy wanting to begin, a girl, a kid, older person, whoever. If you're wanting to go jerkbait fishing, tie it on, go fish it. If it doesn't work, change it up. Keep changing it up until it works for you. It's just like any other bait. Um, I don't fish mine like KVD or anybody else, and they don't fish theirs like the way I do. Uh, there's no right or wrong way to fishing. You just have to do what works for you. Hope this helps out. Down on Jerk Bay. Go catch you a few. Thanks.